Welcome everyone to Sabretooth's Corner, our first ever Kids Club show. I'm Brian Duff. Normally you would see me hosting Sabres Game Night alongside former Sabres netminder Marty Baran on MSG. But as you also know, we are unable to gather for our Sabres Kids Club events in person right now. And we just wanted to be able to find a different way to bring you a fun lineup of guests and activities that you can enjoy from your own home. And whether you've been a Kids Club member in the past or will be joining us in the future, we certainly hope you enjoy the show today. Coming up, we'll be joined by Sabres forward Kyle Opozo to answer some incredible questions submitted by our very own Kids Club members. Now, we will also have a special drawing lesson from one of our Sabres graphic designers. She is so talented, and we might possibly have another guest along the way, so stay tuned for that. But before we get in to our first special guest, we are going to announce the first of our three prize pack winners from our Kids Club sweepstakes. We thank all of you who entered, and our first winner is Jessica Scheiber from West Seneca. Congratulations, you have just won a Sabres prize pack for your family. Entering his 14th professional season and fifth with the Buffalo Sabres, our featured guest today has played in exactly 800 NHL games with more than 500 points. He wears number 21, and I have a feeling he's uh, really going to enjoy your questions today. Hello and welcome, Kyle Opozo. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Hey, we're thrilled to have you with us. Um, when you think about um, what we've been living through these last six months, uh, how would you speak to the kids about how you've negotiated all of this time uh, with your own young kids and uh, how you guys are feeling? Yeah, uh, it's been definitely a challenge uh, at times, but a blessing also. Uh, and the fact that I've got to spend so much time with my own kids and um, we've got to spend just a ton of quality time together and do a lot of things that we wouldn't normally get to do uh, with me traveling a lot. And uh, it's been a lot of uh, family dinners and I have a uh, five month old, five month old son. And so spent pretty much every night of his life with him, which has been, uh, which has been pretty cool. And um, like I said, family dinners and we, uh, you know, one thing that we do as a family, we have a book and, Every day is a different question, so um, we sit down at the at the dinner table and answer uh, answer these questions and write down in the book. So a little fun family activity about about the Oposo household. Isn't it amazing? Uh, and I love that idea, by the way. But isn't it amazing when you say that you've been able to spend every day with your youngest child, and it's pretty almost the exact opposite of what guys who've been living in the playoff bubble have been dealing with and they've had some newborns in their families and haven't been able to get back. And I mean, what a stark contrast, right? Yeah, it's, I, I've talked to quite a few of those guys and, and um, you know, I played on the Islanders for a long time. And so I know a, a number of those guys and a couple of them just had babies and, and, you know, they were away for, for a long time. And I know that it took a toll on them mentally. And, you know, for me, of course, I wish I was playing and I wish that um, that we were participating in the playoffs. But also, I look at it as a blessing for me to be able to spend so much time with my family. Well, our blessing since you've arrived is the fact that your family is always around the rink on game night. So you guys bring us a lot of energy uh, at our studio. And I know you're going to bring the same energy with the answers to these questions, Kyle, because we've got a lot of them lined up from our Kids Club members today. And they've been anxious to get the opportunity to, to ask a Sabre, you know, a lot about what their life is like, and especially in this difficult time. So we're going to start with uh, Maya and uh, Aaliyah, and they're from Brampton, Ontario. And the question is, and you kind of mentioned a little bit about how you've kept busy during the COVID pandemic, but they also had another part to the question. That is, what is something new that you have learned during this time? Wow, tough question right off the bat, Maya and Aaliyah. Um, how have I been keeping busy? Uh, you know, like I said, a lot of it is, is spending time with my kids. Um, Finding different ways to exercise, you know, especially the first uh, three months or so uh, when we couldn't really leave the house. Uh, I had to find, you know, different ways in the backyard or in my bedroom, just kind of doing some different things I used to do when I was a kid, just doing push-ups and stick handling in my garage. And so th that stuff has been, has been fun. And definitely one thing new that I've added is I've got a Peloton. And so I've been biking a lot 
um, on that and doing a lot of different, uh, doing a lot of different classes with that. So that's something new that I've added to the mix. Well, that's really cool. Tucker uh, from Hamburg uh, wants to know, what do you think Eric Stahl will bring to the team? Uh, I think Eric Stahl is going to be a great person for us. Uh, he's going to be a great guy in the locker room. He's been around a long time. Uh, he's got over 1,200 NHL games, which is uh, a ton. I think he's a six-time All-Star and uh, Stanley Cup winner. So he's going to add a lot of experience to our group and somebody who – I know playing against for uh, about 13 years, I know that how passionate he is and how much he wants to win. You can just see it every time that we play against him. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to, to having him in the room, having another really strong veteran presence and, and really just a good person in the locker room. And how about this? Stahl, of course, uh, famously wears number 12, and it's Tucker's 12th birthday today. So happy birthday, Tucker. All the best to you and your family, and thank you for that great question. Yeah, Eric, we talked to him last week, and, um, you know, he, he kind of diminished the whole age thing just by the fact that when he's in the room, he still feels like he's 23, and he gives as well as he gets as far as the chirps back and forth. Do you feel given that you've been around for 800 plus games that the, the, the lifestyle inside the room does in fact keep you young. Yeah, it does. I mean, you get younger guys coming in every year and that keep things light. And, um, you know, I think they definitely look up to, uh, look up to the veterans, but, um, when we kind of give it back to them and, you know, it makes them feel comfortable and then they come out of their shells a little bit. So it definitely, uh, being in the, in the, a hockey locker room definitely keeps you young. Well, speaking of learning something like we did in our first question, I learned that Hopkinton, New York is uh, actually up at the top of the state near Potsdam, near Messina. Remember who used to be uh, near, from there? Your former teammate? Zach Bogosian from Zach Messina, Bogosian, there. that's right. So Joseph is from there and he asked the question, what do you think about the new Royal jerseys? I love the jerseys. Uh, I'm a big fan of Royal, and I just think it looks so clean and old school, too. Um, um, before your time, I'm assuming, but um, I think it just looks extremely clean, uh, classic, and I'm really excited to, uh, you know, to, to put it on. Joseph, great question. Uh, I think a lot of people are really excited about that change from the Sabres standpoint. So when they take to the ice, they will definitely have that fresh, different look. Jack is uh, a little closer to us. He's in Fredonia. And he asked, do you have a special way that you like to tape your stick and your blade? Good question, Jack. I think uh, everybody's different in the things that they do, taping their sticks. I, I would say for about 11 and a half out of my 13 full years professional, I've used black tape and um, there's thin black tape, there's thick black tape and there's thin white and thick white uh, predominantly that guys use. And so I use, when I use black tape, which is the majority of the time I use thin black tape and I go from heel to toe and I tape the whole thing and I cut um, what's left over around the toe. And then I use, uh, wax on it as well. I use sticky wax. There's a lot of different waxes too, uh, candle wax, uh, sticky wax. And so I use the sticky stuff. Uh, so thin black tape, heel to toe, sticky wax. And if I do switch to white, it's usually thick white tape or it was early in my career. So that's a in-depth answer. When was the last time you switched to white? Ooh, it's been a long time. Uh, <laughs> probably six years ago. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Micah and Reed from Kenmore want to know how old you were when you started playing. I was six years old when I started playing hockey. Uh, my family did not play hockey at all when I was growing up, so they didn't know a ton about the game. Um, and I grew up in Minnesota where – a lot of the kids play hockey. There's a lot of outdoor rinks and uh, kids love to uh, kids love to skate outside. And that's kind of where I fell in love with the game. And my first year, I actually uh, knocked the Christmas tree over accidentally with a uh, shot from my 
from my stick and uh, it was a, some sort of toy. So I wasn't allowed to play hockey the rest of that year. So my first full year was when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Uh, Max from Orchard Park wants to know if you could choose one player to join the Sabres as a teammate, either through the draft, trade, or free agency. Who would it be and why? I'd have to say Sidney Crosby. And he is – he embodies um, who you want to look up to uh, mm -hmm. as a role model and uh, how he plays, how he prepares, how he acts off the ice. He doesn't – he doesn't seek, you know, a ton of pub publicity. He just does the right things all the time. And I think that he's such a good example, not to mention how good of a hockey player he is and how his leadership and just the way that he works and the way that he wants to be the best every day comes out and makes your team automatically better. Um, so he's one guy that I would, I would love, to, uh, love to have in the Sabres. Your former team, the Islanders, has a very recent rivalry going with the Penguins and a long-ago rivalry. Uh, what was your first dealing with Sydney, if you will, uh, you know, back in the previous decade? Uh, well, I actually went to high school with Sid, so, yeah. um, you know, he, I was a freshman and he was a sophomore. And so I, I've known him for a long time. Um, that was at Shattuck, correct? That was at Shattuck. Yes. Yep. So we, we went there together for a year and then, uh, I remember first playing against him and just, you know, early in my career, I just was a bit wowed at, you know, the things that he could do and, and how big of a superstar he was. And um, we had a lot of battles with Pittsburgh over the years. They, they definitely had the upper hand early. And we actually had a pretty big, uh, <laughs> a pretty big game against them. There were, I think there was 300 penalty minutes against oh, yeah. Pittsburgh, the one game. <laughs> um, so that was, uh, that was a fun little memory against them. And my first playoff game was actually against, uh, against Pittsburgh also. So. Uh, had some had some good games with Sid over the years. Very cool. Uh, Felicity from Orchard Park wants to know what made you choose to play hockey. Well, Felicity, I, I think a lot of my buddies were playing at the time, and and I didn't know a lot about it, and and I thought that the skating aspect was really cool. I just the fact that you had that it wasn't on your feet; it was uh, it was on this thin blade, and you had to. It was basically I, I thought about I thought about it like soccer because I played soccer and so you just had to kind of go around people and and shoot it in but it was just um, on this thin blade with the puck and I just thought it was fascinating and and what, right when I started to play I just got hooked so um, I think the fact that it was on skates was probably the biggest motivator for me. Yeah, I think it's still the thing that wows uh, other professional athletes the most. I mean, I think there's always a, a common respect. Uh, among athletes but the wow factor and the hard to believe factor for many is that you guys continue to be able to do this uh, on blades and boy oh boy the technology keeps changing with that as well and that and that is something um leads me into this next question from Braden from cheek do you have any pre-game rituals and i say that because sometimes guys are really finicky with their skates and uh you know whether one foot goes on first all the time uh, what were your and what are your pre-game rituals uh, how long do you got, Braden? Um, <laughs> no, no, I, you know what? I'm not too bad. Uh, I have a lot of, I have a routine that I, that I generally stick with, but if something kind of gets messed up, then I don't, uh, put a ton of stock into it, but I put everything on from right to left. Uh, so right skate goes on first, right shin pad, right elbow pad. Um, I wear my elbow pads on the wrong arms, which is something I've always done. Don't know why. Uh, probably when, when I was a kid, I just didn't know that they were on the wrong arms. And so now I put them on the right arms and it feels weird to me. So something, unfortunately, I've passed along to my son. Um, but um, yeah, so I just, I put everything on right to left. And um, I got a couple different things that I do in warm up. Um, the, to get ready for the game and try and make the warm up as game like as possible, especially at the end. So um, I'd say those are those are the big ones. Fantastic answer, by the way. <laughs> I'm learning as much as our kids club members here, so I love this. Uh, Carter and Ellie are from Lockport, and they want to know why you pick the number on your jersey and why it's important to you. Good question. Uh, I picked 21 
when I got to the Islanders, I had the choice of 12 or 21. And um, I had worn number eight for most of my life and when I was a kid. And I got to the Islanders and eight was taken. And so it was 12 or 21. And when I was growing up, Peter Forsberg was one of my favorite players. Him and Joe Sackick were my two favorite players. And, and Forsberg wore 21. And, of course, uh, Brian Trottier wore number 19 with the Islanders, and his number is retired. So um, 21 is, is what I chose and to honor Peter Forsberg. And what about number eight when you were younger? Why that one? I don't know why I wore number eight. I just um, – I think that was a number they gave me when I uh, got to my summer team. And um, that's really where I started to uh, get very serious in hockey. And I just always wore number eight. So um, I really liked it. And then when I got to college, number eight was actually retired. It was the only number that was retired. So I wore number nine in college. Ooh, nice. Famous number, of course. Uh, also in NHL history, Owen and Eli from Elma want to know, what did you like most about the game when you were a squirt? When I was a squirt. So a squirt, you're about eight, nine, I believe, or seven and eight, somewhere around there. Um, the most thing or the my favorite thing about the game when I was that age was um, – geez, good question. I, I think I liked how fast it was, mm -hmm. and I used to sit and – well, I had a set of goalie pads, so they were a set of Vic goalie pads. Oh, and, yes. <laughs> and uh, so I used to go in my parents' bed at night, and when the games came on, the games came on about 6 o'clock because I was in central time. Yep. And so I would grab a tennis ball, my goalie pads, and my baseball glove, and I would throw the ball off the TV and pretend to make saves <laughs> uh on my parents bed and <laughs> definitely messed it up a lot but that was my favorite thing was trying to emulate the goalies and, and try and make saves like that uh i recall loving at that age um when you had a good performance and like your team sponsor or coach would come in with um a whole tray of uh well, they were fountain drinks then. It was like, if, if we got a, all, everybody got a Coke after the game, like that was like the biggest thing. And uh, obviously things have changed a little bit. It'd probably be sport drinks now, but uh, yeah, fun memories in the arena and for you uh, away from the arena at that age, for sure. Uh, who, now, who's your favorite superhero and why? Sebastian wants to know. He's from Caledonia, Ontario. Uh, his favorite superhero and why, Sebastian, is... Don't you wear a Superman cap? Yeah, <laughs> he's the first one that popped into my head. Um, <laughs> I just think he, I mean, there's only one thing that can defeat him is kryptonite. And um, otherwise, he's the most powerful superhero, basically. Um, and I just, I think it's, he's just, I think he's awesome. And he can fly. And that was always my biggest thing. If I had any superpower, what would it be? It would be to fly. And so that um, is definitely why I like Superman. Well, that may segue perfectly into our final question. Tori and Jeffrey from South Wales, New York, want to know who was your favorite sports idol growing up? And when you're thinking, how is this a segue, Kyle? I know you're going to think back to what we were talking about when quarantine began and what we were watching on TV and how this guy can almost literally fly. Am I guessing the right guy here? <laughs> Yeah, one of two, but yeah, you guess the right guy. And uh, he had a big documentary about out about him recently, and uh, it's Michael Jordan. And he, in my opinion, is um, is the greatest basketball player of all time and one of the best athletes of all time. And he just was so competitive, fiercely competitive. Didn't allow his team to lose when it mattered. And um, I just had ton of a ton of respect for him athletically. And when I was a kid, he's the person that I watched every day. I get home from school, uh, I would watch the reruns on WGN. That's what the, the station was. And the old super um, station. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a ton of fun to watch Michael Jordan play basketball. And who was the other one? Tiger. Tiger Woods was, he was the reason I, I fell in love with golf also. And, um, I loved watching him play when he was at his peak. 
what's it like being somebody's sports idol? Because whether you've met those kids along the way or young adults, you know they're out there. What does it feel like when you're in your position? It's, a, it's an odd feeling. Um, I guess I don't quite understand the weight of it until I take a step back and look at it from my perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, is when I met, uh, like I've met Tiger um, and talked to him for, for a little bit. And um, I just remember I was extremely nervous um and just the the amount of of time that i've spent watching him and um rooting for him and feeling like i could embody him in the way that i would would play golf um it's just it's pretty special and for somebody to have that same reaction with when they meet me is is it's pretty amazing Mm -hmm. and Um, I just try and be the best person that I can. So um, when I do meet these people that, you know, they have somebody positive to look up to. Well, you've been incredibly successful on that front, uh, not to mention on the ice as well. Thank you for these terrific answers. Uh, I know the kids uh, thoroughly enjoyed them today. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks again to all of our Sabres Kids Club members who submitted those terrific questions for Kyle. What great answers he provided us. And we're going to announce another Kids Club sweepstakes winner. Our second winner in this edition is Crystal Criticos from Rochester. Congratulations, Crystal. You have just won a Buffalo Sabres prize pack for your family. Well, during this segment of Sabretooth's Corner, you're going to want to have a piece of paper, maybe more than one, uh, a drawing utensil, you know, a pencil or a pen, whatever you're comfortable with, and blue and gold markers or crayons, because we're going to learn how to draw Sabretooth. And Chelsea from our graphic design team is with us to talk about how we're going to go through the steps of drawing a perfect or near perfect Sabretooth. Chelsea, thank you for being with us for this segment. Um, Tell the kids what a graphic designer who works for a sports team does. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Um, So I'm a graphic designer here for the Sabres, and I always loved art my whole life. So I decided to take that into college and went to college for art. And that led me here to the sports teams that I love and in a city that I love to be in. And I'm super stoked. And so on a day-to-day basis, because I think a lot of us wouldn't know exactly what you're you know doing as far as the graphic design element what kind of things do you work on that uh, that are all part of being a part of a sports team so i work on a computer mostly and i do anything from the stuff you might see on social media on facebook or instagram or if you go down to the arena and you see a sign or um a sign telling you where to go. I design stuff like that. That's really cool. Lots of other stuff, but. Now, how do you feel about special guests? You know, as long as they maintain their social distance. A special guest, that's awesome. Hi, (laughs) Saber Tooth. Okay, Tooth, well, why don't you take a seat and follow along with all of us here as we get into the drawing tutorial with Chelsea. Chelsea, how how, uh, challenging is this? And how fun is this for kids to, you know, take the opportunity to try and draw saber too. Well, that's a good question, but this is going to be really fun and really easy. So don't worry. Anyone could do it. I bet your dog Sparky could do it. <laughs> I wonder if Tooth was drawing dogs back in the day. Tooth, did you, Tooth, what did you like drawing? Did you draw dogs back in the day, Tooth? Tooth looks like he's having some difficulties back there. I, I, I think, I think he's, yeah, he's very focused on the task at hand here. So why don't you lead us in, Chels? What's the first step here? All right, guys. So we're going to draw Sabretooth's head today, not his whole body. So what we're going to do first, you got your paper and you got your markers. We're going to make the outline, and then we're going to color it in after we're all done. So we're going to make kind of like a lopsided circle here, and that's going to be his head. Go a little more on the bottom than on the top. And then next, we're gonna add some ears. And he's got one floppy ear here. And 
one other floppy ear, these big curves here. And now we're going to add his nose. And that's going to be like an oval towards the bottom of the circle. What do you remember drawing most as a kid? Trees. Oh yeah. Yeah. I and just... then and then where did it uh, where did it go from from that point? It actually a lot of fine arts and painting. I really love to do that stuff too. Very cool. All right, so now we're gonna add kind of an upside down triangle to his snout will be his nose. And we can give that a quick color in here. How's Tooth doing? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Chels. Is there a lot of Tooth artwork already behind you there? There is, I came in this morning and I think Tooth snuck in and uh -huh. threw all these pictures of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he has a particular favorite. <laughs> you have a favorite? All of them? <laughs> <laughs>Uh, well, now that he appears to have picked himself up, why don't we pick up and <laughs> tell us where you left off? All right. So next we're going to draw Tooth's eyes. And these are just going to be upside down U's. And then inside the eye, we're going to draw another upside down U. It sounds so simple, but it's really neat how you put it into context, just, you know, the shape of a letter. So your brain thinks just the shape of a letter, instead of just trying to imagine how precise you have to be, because we can all draw the letters, right? Absolutely. It, and if we break it down, and this is how we draw, you know, in the creative industry, it's just little by little. Mm -hmm. So we're going to draw these circles, and these are going to be the highlights in the eyes. And then we're going to fill in around the eye, but keep that circle empty. Wow, okay. that's fabulous. So next we're gonna add in his eyebrows. And these are just kind of big blob shapes. We're just gonna kind of have them touch the top of the eye a little bit. Mm -hmm. How many times before today have you actually drawn saber tooth? Probably a couple, but yeah. today, <laughs> lots, lots of practicing for you guys. All right, so now we're going to add a little bit of detail. So we're going to add the inside of the ears. Tooth, you're still following along back there? Okay. Glad he's doing well. I'm going to color in the outside of the ears. because The inside of his ears are orange and the outside is blue. But I have a black marker here. But you can use whatever you have at home. And that's important to remember too, right? I mean, it's everybody's creative expression. Obviously, we all love the blue and gold. I've got the markers that they're ready to, to, to do my coloring here, but the beauty of art, uh, as I'm sure you can, uh, you know, attest to Chelsea, is that um, you, the colors you want to express with um, are, are the best examples of, of what you want to show, right? Absolutely. You can use your imagination. You can use whatever you have at home. Any color you like, your favorite color, your mom's favorite color. Now, I feel like when we're young, we, we often are focused on coloring things in, but did you find that you really loved the drawing aspect before even the coloring aspect when you were really young? I think you start out coloring and that kind of leads you into drawing and discovering that I loved to draw and that it was uh, really, you know, satisfying for me that led me into my career. All right, so now we're gonna fill in his eyebrows. 
he had scissors back there. So as long as he's being safe. Exactly. <laughs> I can't wait to see what he does, Brian. I'm just glad he's out of quarantine. I know it was pretty tough for him for a while, but uh, good to see him back in the office. Yeah, it's good to see him around here. He makes everyone smile. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more detail. We're almost done. So we are going to add in Toots teeth. Perfect. So again, two upside down U shapes, right at the bottom of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, now we're gonna add in a couple little dots here to represent his whiskers. And then his stripes. You can't forget his stripes. I'm gonna put one on the top. We're gonna add a couple over here. I'm gonna add three, Brian, mm -hmm. but you guys at home can add as many as you want. It's so amazing to watch your work. Every time you just put a little line, it, it just enhances everything so much. It's brilliant to watch, it really is. I know, isn't that fun? That's the great thing about art. No matter what you're creating, you're, it's, you're always gonna end up with something. Uh -huh. Whether it looks like mine or not, as long as we're having fun doing it, that's all that matters. Did you often find you wanted to just keep adding more and more and more detail, or did you always kind of know when you'd reached you know, the, the completion of a project you were on? That's, that's such a good question. And the truth is, it's very easy to overdo things sometimes and you have mm -hmm. to kind of rein it in and pull it back. Wow, this is amazing how it's come together. Look at this, guys. Holy cow, that's fantastic. We have quite the artist here. I think so. And for you guys to finish yours at home, just grab some crayons and go ahead and Bill too thin. He can be orange or purple or whatever you want. Right? Great job, Tooth. Chelsea, great job as well. This has been so much fun. And I'm sure that our kids enjoyed the lesson today and are now experts at drawing saber tooth. Thanks, guys. Well, we have one last prize pack winner to announce, and the final winner of the day is Robert Kordelewski from Lancaster. Congratulations, Robert. You have just won a Sabres prize pack for your family. We want to thank our proud partners, Doodlebugs, along with all of you tuning in today, and to those premium Kids Club members, thank you for being a part of the Sabres Kids Club. For registration information for next season's club, please visit sabres.com slash kidsclub for club updates and more details. We'll see you soon.